I'm here talking to Professor Steven Pinker about his latest book, Better Angels of Our Nature. Oh, I'm excited to get to talk about it because I, I love the book. Uh, what drew you in? Did you know you were going to write a book about this or was it just seeing the trend that made it too interesting? A, a combination of two things. One of them was a perennial interest in human nature. And if you're interested in human nature, you've got to deal with violence because there are age-old questions like, are we innately violent? Are we innately peaceful and cooperative? What does this say about how we should organize our societies? Do we have a, uh, an evil nature that has to be tamed? Or do you just let people do their thing and they'll naturally flourish in a you know, communal harmony? So there's that whole set of intellectual issues. Then I kept coming across these uh, remarkable statistics uh, showing that violence in many ways has plunged over the course of history. The first graph that blew me away was uh, one that plotted homicide rates in Europe since the Middle Ages. And the graph went like this. A contemporary uh, Englishman has about one-fiftieth the chance of being murdered as his medieval ancestor. Most people don't know that. We think of the Middle Ages as a you know, carefree, innocent time dancing around the Maypole. We don't realize <laughs> that people were stabbing each other over the dinner table at the, at the, you know, the slightest insult. Uh, I came across statistics that rates of death in tribal warfare are uh, vastly higher than those of, of modern wars. Uh, and then when I started to talk about this in, in blog postings and, and small talks, uh, scholars from these fields I'd never heard of wrote to me with still more data on various declines of violence. The fact that there hasn't been a war between two big powerful countries since the end of the Korean War in 1953. Half a century without a great power war is just unprecedented in human history. Rates of child abuse are down. Rates of domestic violence are down. And I felt that I had to uh, make a larger audience aware of all of these facts that had been buried in the scholarly literature, but also to make sense of it. What does it say about human nature? But it's amazing to me that it hadn't been discussed as a mainstream topic. I mean, you know, what is the most, one of the most interesting questions of history or even psychology is this idea of is there a progression of how man treats man? And I have to say, I was, I was stunned uh, reading the book at the number of these trends and that I'd never heard of it uh, ever before. Yeah. You would think that nothing could be more important yeah. than keeping track of whether everything we've been doing over you know, centuries and millennia has made us better off or worse off. And most people think it's made us worse off, that we're better off in a state of nature. Uh, but uh, I think it is a profound message that we've been doing some things right, where we don't crucify people anymore. Uh, we don't keep slaves with the legal uh, protection of government. Uh, kings don't wage war whenever they get you know, insulted or dissed and, and sacrifice tens of thousands of peasants just to assuage their own vanity. Uh, we don't have debtors' prisons. Men of honor don't engage in duels to protect their, their <laughs> reputation. So, uh, so yeah, as, as awful as things are now, and there's certainly many things to be concerned about, uh, it, it probably was, used to be worse. I also wanted to combine my, the story that I told in graphs and numbers with sanity checks. Like, could, can we really believe that the murder rate went down by a factor of 50? And so I had vignettes from life as it used to be lived uh, to remind people that, yeah, it was pretty brutal in biblical times or in Roman times or in the, the Middle Ages when they when they, they broke people on the wheel or burned them on the stake or crucified them or entire villages were massacred. If you think of the arrow of time, you know, as pointing towards potential improvement, your mentality is very different than if you think of, okay, we're fallen, you know, things are, are always going uh, to get worse. And in my work on global health, it's, you always have to first confront people with the fact that there's been this unbelievable improvement and they find it you know very surprising at first uh, you know 1960 20 million children a year were dying now we're down to 8 million and if we do the right things that 8 million can go down to 4 million and so there there really is this progression that someone can be part of and that uh, you know speaks to a more positive way of looking at the world you know, particularly right now where there's a lot of malaise about uh, economic 
uh, situation and government decisiveness, I, I, I find, uh, you know, I wish more people understood these, these longer term trends. Well, it's, it's a way of thinking that I obviously very much uh, uh, sympathize with, and that is surprisingly uncommon. So first of all, you have people not realizing that things have gotten better, because you, you read about the horror stories, and there are always enough of them to fill the evening news. And unless you actually look at the numbers over time, you don't realize that even if things are bad, they used to be worse, and that real change uh, ha has taken place. Um, and what we do can make a difference. I mean, as you, those numbers that you point out are astonishing. And people don't appreciate that people are living longer. They are less likely to die in infancy, less likely to die in childbirth, more likely to get an education. And just knowing that numbers carry moral weight, that even if a problem isn't eliminated, it really does make a difference if fewer people die of violence or disease or hunger. And that what we do can, by chipping away at the numbers, just adds to the amount of, of human flourishing and human happiness. Uh, journalists tend not to think that way often, often enough. Point, they point to the problems, I think, spread compassion fatigue. Can I really help? Uh, there's so much suffering in the world. But we need to focus on, I think, on, on the, the numbers to realize how much good still can be done in the world.